Hey there, welcome back to another YouTube video. We have a fun, different, unique video coming your way today, but first, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. Today, we are gonna show you eight crafts for the holidays. As occupational therapy assistants, we love doing crafts with our clients. It's always a great fine motor, sensory activity, and just a fun sit-down task for kiddos to do. And it was motivating because they got to take home this fun craft when they were done. The crafts that we're gonna show you today are great for a variety of ages. You can modify them up to make them more challenging or modify them down so they're a little bit easier, a little bit more simple. You can also incorporate these crafts into obstacle courses if you don't want to just do it sitting at the table. So depending on the child, their goals, what they enjoy, you can change up these crafts and do them in a variety of ways. We're gonna hop up to our table and we're gonna get started making these crafts with you. I have a lot to say on the top. I know you do. <laughs> we are here starting with our first holiday, which is New Year's. So we're gonna do a little firework craft for you today. So materials, you're gonna need a baking sheet, a white piece of paper, a couple of marbles, some paint, and some tape. And you're gonna start by taping your paper to the cookie sheet. All right, once your paper is taped to the cookie sheet, you get your paint out and you're gonna put blobs of paint all over the paper. <laughs> is New Year's, so That's we're getting a little best. glittery here today. Now, all you have to do is put the marbles on the tray and get rolling. Get rolling. <laughs> and for this, this is a really great bilateral integration activity for your child to hold the tray and tilt it to make the marbles roll. Except that one's stuck. The glitter glue is really holding strong. <laughs> The trick here is to change the position. So you can modify by having the child sit in a tall kneel, crisscross applesauce. We're really working on that mid-range control, the force modulation, so they're not throwing the marbles off the cookie tray, getting your elbows up off the table. So in case you do use glitter glue, just know that it is very sticky. But look at it, it looks like fireworks. How fun. The next one is the perfect craft for Valentine's Day. You're gonna need one or two pieces of red paper, some scissors, a marker, a hole punch, tissue paper, and some type of string or yarn. And you're gonna start by drawing a heart on your piece of paper. If you're using two, you'll end up cutting out both pieces of paper. But if you're just using one piece of paper, you'll fold your paper in half and then draw your heart because the next step is to cut it out. When your kiddo is cutting, you wanna make sure they're stabilizing and shifting the paper with their opposite hand. And when they're holding their scissors, we always want the thumb on top. So you're gonna end up with two hearts. Next, if your kiddo wants to draw or write something on the heart, that will be the next step before you do the hole punching. Next, you're gonna hole punch all the way around the heart. Now this one, you can make dots on the heart so that your child has to hole punch exactly on the dot. It really works on that visual motor, but Rachel doesn't need the dots. If your child's hands are not quite strong enough for the hole punch, because that hole punch is pretty hard, you can go ahead and help them. Oftentimes I'll do some hand over hand to help squeeze that hole punch all the way. There we go. Okay, now you need some string and you're gonna have your child sew through the holes that were just punched, but don't sew all the way, just sew about three quarters of the way through. Make sure that you don't completely close off your heart because we are going to stuff it with tissue paper next. One fun way you can work on some additional skills is by crumpling the tissue paper with just one hand. That was a big piece of tissue yes, paper. Yes, it was. <laughs> you can work on ripping the tissue paper with two hands. Once it's stuffed, then you finish sewing the heart so the tissue paper doesn't come out. This definitely takes a little finesse so you don't rip the paper. Mm -hmm. So just work on that force modulation once again. 
And we are right about ready to seal the deal, folks. You can work on some of those tying skills if you want. Give it a snipski. And you've got a stuffed heart. So cute. We are ready for St. Patrick's Day here. We are gonna make some rainbows, pot of, pots of gold, just a fun way to work on crossing midline, some primitive reflex integration, all the good things. Yeah. Let's start by getting some butcher paper, some big paper and tape it to the table. Um, you could even do this one on the floor as well, tape it down mm -hmm. and have your child lay it on their tummy. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna be staying on the table. We're gonna start by drawing a rainbow. So we're gonna grab our first color of the rainbow and draw with big, big arm movements all the way up and across the page. Notice that she is crossing Ooh. midline. She's getting that ATNR worked on. She is starting from left to right. I think the next color I'm gonna have her start right to left Ooh. and see how that does. Oh boy. It's definitely harder. Good. Now, I think I'm gonna have her use her left hand and go from left to right. I'm really challenging you today. Oh, left hand, hold on. Oh gosh. Beautiful. And now let's go from right to left mm -hmm. with your left hand. Lots of sidedness today. <laughs> what is that word? I don't know. Hand dominance, recognizing which hand we're using. And now for the last color, I'm gonna let her choose whichever hand she feels most comfortable with. I was also thinking you can make dots on the paper for the child to have to connect and give them a little bit more of a visual. Start and stop. Start yeah. and stop target, mm -hmm. yeah. There we go. Now that we have this beautiful rainbow, we of course need to add our pot of gold. So we're gonna take some glue and just let the child work on their hand strength and squeeze some fun pictures or shapes or wiggly lines on both sides of the rainbow. We're gonna pour a little bit of the glitter on the page and we're gonna work those nice pincers and pinch some of the glitter and sprinkle it all over. I love how the glitter feels in between my fingers. You can talk about that with your kiddos. Have them guess how many particles of glitter there are. <laughs> Maybe count a few and see if they're anywhere close. All right, now that we have our beautiful rainbow, we are going to pop our tape off and we're gonna give it a little tap tap. Should we just put a little tap tap on the table? Like this? Oh yeah, tap 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 tap. Oh boy. There we go and just let let the glue dry. All right, it is officially Easter time, so we are going to be doing an Easter craft and you're going to need some Easter eggs, some items to put inside of your Easter eggs and we're going to add a challenge with some markers to draw some images on our Easter eggs. So let's get started. What we're going to do is draw some different patterns on the Easter egg halves so that then when we take the halves apart, the child has to match them together. All right, now that we have our eggs with our images on them, we're going to pop them open and put some treasures inside of them. The goal here is to work on a little bit of that auditory processing. So I put bells in mine, but the child wouldn't see what you put in there. So now that your mystery eggs have treasures inside of them, you're going to have your child shake them and try to guess what they hear inside of them. If your child says, oh, I know there's jingle bells in there, it's too easy, then you can say, well, how many jingle bells do you think are inside of here? And they can so hard. shake it and move it and try to guess how many jingle bells they think are inside. Once they give you a guess, have them open it and say, have them see if they're right. And somehow, magically, I knew there were three jingle bells inside of that. So this is a fun way to work on those auditory processing skills, the fine motor skills, the visual motor skills. You really work on a lot with this one activity. Our next one is for the 4th of July, and we're gonna do fireworks again, but the fireworks are gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna start with drawing some really simple fireworks on the paper. 
Now, if you don't want your child to use the lines and just have them create their own, you don't have to do the lines, but what's next is you're gonna have your child squeeze the glue following the lines. This is great for hand strengthening by squeezing the glue. This is great for visual motor control to stay on the line. That's, it's great for force modulation, knowing how much force to use to get out just the right amount of glue. Also some great imaginative work here too, if you don't have the lines for your child to just create their own design. Next, we're gonna sprinkle salt on the glue and cover it just like we would if it were glitter. This is great to get those pincher fingers working, to pinch and sprinkle the glue. This is great for kiddos who are averse to tactile input, get some messy tactile play. Do this outside for less cleanup. <laughs> Next, you're gonna get your watercolor paint and add some water to the colors that you want to use for your fireworks. What colors are you gonna use? I'm gonna use blue. Some blue. Once it's nice and watery and mixed up, you can start adding it to your glue salt mixture. This is really great for attention and fine motor control, and it's very cause and effect, which makes it fun to watch. So there you have it, our salt firework painting. It is October now. We are making a pumpkin craft, and this is uh, one of my all-time favorites. We need orange paper, pencil, scissors, hole punch, and a pipe cleaner. So you can see here we have drawn our lines on our paper and Jessica is going to just simply start cutting those straight lines out. This is a pretty straightforward craft in that there isn't zigzags or circles. So this is a, this is a, a toddler craft that should be able to be done pretty simply. Now we're going to take our hole punch and we are going to punch holes in the top and the bottom of the strips of paper. You can draw those dots on there to give your child a visual of where they need to punch those holes. Now the way Jessica is doing it right now, it does require more hand strength. So keep that in mind if your little wants to do that. Okay, now that we have all of our paper hole punched, we are going to start by making a little, I don't know, indent on our pipe cleaner. Like a knot, basically. Yeah, and we're gonna start stringing our pipe cleaner with the hole punched paper. We're just gonna do one at a time. Now you're going to take the other side of your paper and fold it and string it. Just don't quite put it all the way down. So just slide it on. Nice and easy. About halfway, a little farther than halfway. So you can make your pumpkin as squished, as flat, or as voluptuous as you really want it to be and kind of move these pieces around how you want them. Then we're gonna make a little pumpkin leaf on top, seal the deal, and ta-da, just like that. All right, we are gonna show you a quick Thanksgiving craft with some paint. And this is a really good one for those kiddos who don't like their hands to get messy because they're gonna, are about to get messy. They're gonna get messy. <laughs> so Rachel is gonna grab her brown paint and she is going to paint her hand brown and I think some different colors for the, the feathers. feathers. Yeah. This is gonna be a Thanksgiving turkey. This is one where you can have <laughs> your kiddos be as imaginative as they want. You can have them copy a picture so they kind of know what they're making and the colors to use and where to put the different colors. This is really great for kiddos who have a retained palmer grasp mm -hmm. reflex because that input to their palm is gonna tickle and make them wanna close their hand. So this is really great to work on integrating that primitive reflex. All right, once their hand is fully painted, they're gonna push it down onto the paper. And this can be a good one where you can have them use their other hand to push down on their fingers, push down on their palm, work on some of that body awareness. Hey, oh, that's pretty good. Not bad. That's pretty good. 
And then if they want, they can use a marker and draw some of the other turkey features. It is Christmas time now and we are going to be making a shaving cream paint Christmas tree. Jess is going to draw a beautiful Christmas tree on our, this is like a poster cardstock, cool little canvas here. Now we're going to mix some green paint and our shaving cream and make a very cool texture paint and we're going to paint it on our Christmas tree. Now cool you can you can put the paintbrush aside and have the child use their fingers for some novel tactile input which is just a fun way to craft and work on some sensory input simultaneously. So you can get your fingers messy, you can work on those fine motor skills and just use the paintbrush. And once you have it completely painted, you could sprinkle glitter on it, you could put sequins on it, decorate the Christmas tree. You could add some essential oils if you wanted to and make it a pine tree scented painted tree. You can really get as creative as you want. It's just a really fun way to paint in a different medium. When the shaving cream dries, it will look like a different texture, feel like a different texture. It's more like a 3D type paint activity that we're doing. The <laughs> nice thing is, is you can, you can use this any time of the year. You can paint an Easter egg or mm -hmm. a flower, whatever yep. floats your boat. But there you go. Have some fun, make some cool crafts, OT your kiddos for us and have some fun. If you liked this video, if you try some of these activities, let us know, leave a comment, find us on social media. We're at Harkla underscore family, as well as at all things sensory podcast. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. We do drop a new YouTube video every Tuesday. So without further ado, enjoy these crafts and we'll see you next week. end up with two hearts. Oh, I, I thought you were going to show both of the hearts. Oh. <laughs> with two hearts.